welcome students today let us discuss the characteristics of graphites graphites are the most simplest and the most primitive land plants the name graphite has been derived from two words graon meaning moss and phaeton meaning plant so moss like plants are called as graphites the word graphite was coined for the first time by brown in 1864 the branch of science which deals with the study of graphites is called as bryology students at the present the phylum graphite includes 960 genera and approximately 24000 species graphites are small plants that grow in moist shady places they are terrestrial but require external water to complete their life cycle hence they are also called as the amphibians of plant kingdom they have a leafy or thalloid green plant which is completely adapted to the land habit but as i said they still depend on water for sexual reproduction now what are the salient features of graphites graphites are land plants that differ from uh, all the other plants lacking lignified vascular tissue by having the gametophytic generation as the dominant and having unbran unbranched sporophytes that produce a single sporangium graphites grow in damp and shady places they follow heterologous haplobiontic type of life cycle heterologous meaning two different stages generations are involved one haploid and the other diploid the plant body lacks true roots stem or leaves the lower forms mainly the hepaticopsida and the members of the anthocyanotopsida grow prostrate on the ground and are attached to the substratum by delicate unbranched unicellular hair like structures called the rhizoids students the rhizoids of the bryophytes are analogous to the roots of higher plants why i have used this term analogous because the origin is different morphologically the origin is different the rhizoids develop from the gametophytic generation and the roots of the higher plants they arise from the sporophytic generation but they are homologous structures what do you mean by homologous they are having the similar function as the roots of the higher plants what is the function of roots the function of roots is to absorb and attach absorption and attachment so the function of the roots of higher plants are being done by the rhizoids of the graphites the dominant plant body is the gametophyte on which the sporophyte is semi parasitic for its nutrition now the salient features of the graphite higher graphites the brapsida members here the plant body is erect and it consists of a central axis which bears leaf like expansion it is attached to the substratum by branched multicellular rhizoids the vascular tissues 
the conducting tissues in the form of xylem and phloem are completely absent from this group and the gametophytes bear multicellular and jacketed sex organs the anthridia and archegonia what is the structure of the anthridia anthridia is the male reproductive organ and the structure of a mature anthridium as you see it is an elongated structure having a, a void of pear shaped body and it is attached on a short stalk multi multicellular stalk to the Uh, parent plant and this anthridial chamber is attached to the stalk and the anthridial wall is surrounded the anthridial chamber is surrounded by an anthridial wall which is protective in function it encloses a mass of small fertile cubical cells the sper spermatozoites or the anthrizoites the female reproductive organ is the archegonium the archegonium as you are saying is a flask shaped structure and it consists of two parts the basal swollen part called the venter and a long slender neck the neck consists of the neck canal cells and the venter has a venter canal cell and an egg the sex organs in the bryophytes are multicellular and jacketed whereas the sex organs of the lower plants are not having a sterile jacket here the sexual reproduction is oogamous type now first let me discuss the structure of the sporophyte in all bryophytes the sporophyte is without differentiation and is differentiated into stem and leaves it is rootless and consists of a foot seta and capsule here you can see it is attached to the parent plant or the gametophyte and it is having a foot seta and a capsule the capsule bears the spores which are the meiospores the spores are uh, formed after the meiosis and they are or all alike called as homospores the sporophyte is simpler than the gametophyte and is organically attached to the parent plant by means of a foot now what is the structure of the gametophyte the gametophyte is the dominant phase in the life cycle and the gametophyte is having two basic forms the prostrate form and an erect form the lower plants the lower uh, group of plant uh, class uh, members like the hornworts and the liverworts they have a relatively simple gametophyte which consists of a flat thallus and the archegonia and anthridia are embedded in the thallus this the structure of the gametophyte is uh, basically the thallus is ribbon shaped and some liverworts are more elaborate with distinct leaves and stem the leaves are blunt tipped or lobed and are attached to these stems in two or three overlapping rows sporophyte i have discussed earlier now if you happen to see the entire life cycle of the graphite it shows a haplobiontic alternations of generation what do, do you mean by alternations of generation where two generations hetero means dissimilar generations the gametophyte and the sporophyte regularly alternate each other now the gametophyte is the dominant phase in the bryophytes so the bryophyte the gametophyte plant after the vegetative 
formation vegetative reproduction it enters into the reproductive stage and it the thallus bears the sex organs in the form of anthidium and the archegodium the structure of anthidium and archegodium i have explained before the anthidia bears the spermatozoites or sperms and the archegonium has the egg a process called fertilization or syngamy takes place and the one or many anthidiums travel into the neck of the archegodium and only one sperm or the or the anthidiums fuses with the egg to form a structure called the zygote the zygote formation of the zygote gives rise to the second generation of the plant of the bryophytes that is the the plant enters into the diploid generation which is the sporophytic generation the zygote gives rise to the embryo and the embryo under a, uh, after going metamorphic changes gives rise to the spores the spores of the sporophyte consists of the foot seta and capsule and the capsule bears the spores which undergo meiosis and after meiosis spores are produced and the spores they germinate to form a juvenile stage called the protonema and the protonema finally gives to the new plant so two basic stages the fertilization and meiosis demarcate the two generations the haploid generation begins with the formation of spores and ends with the formation of the spermatozoites and the egg the fertilization of the syngamy begins the diploid generation which is the zygote and zygote gives rise to the embryo and embryo in turn gives rise to the sporophyte and thus this life cycle constantly goes on and this is the alternations of generations in graphics this is all for now thank you